<laughs> it feels a little strange recording again because it's been a while. But I think I said that before. I think that uh, one of the things we find in winter is that we often have to go back through and make adjustments and changes you know, in our lifestyle and the way that we do things because one of the most common expressions you hear people say is spring cleaning or planting season or getting ready for summer or getting ready for spring. Oftentimes the midst of winter isn't usually the time most people look forward to spring but you see being in California I get a chance to jump start everything and be ahead of the schedule. Kind of like these seeds you see here. Now I don't know if you know this but these are seeds. <laughs> yeah you know that. But the Bible itself we're told is called the Word of God, but it's also called the seed, you know, that the planting of the seed of the Word, that it would grow up into a harvest, that a lot of times our actions are called seeds, and a lot of the things that we do often are plantings that we've caused or we've put into our own little containers, and then we just wait and see what kind of harvest we get from it. The only difference is the Bible kind of tells us what's going to happen once we plant certain kinds of seed. You see, I know, <clears throat> because I planted them, that I have tomatoes growing. I think these are tomatoes. Or wait a minute, do I remember which ones I planted? Oops, maybe I don't. Hmm, that's right, these don't look like those. Oh well. Once they grow a little taller and they start to bear fruit, I think I'll be able to tell what kind of seed they are. And you know, that's true in your life too. A lot of times, you'll forget what you've done. That you yourself are the one that planted the seeds of your own blessing or your own destruction. That you've caused some of the things that have happened to you to happen to you. Because you did it. You reap what you sow. And that's kind of what I'm planning on doing is that, you see, I have a lot of variety of plantings here. You know, I have, oh, I don't know, tomato plants mixed in with some bean plants, mixed in with other kind of plants. Getting ready to do some cucumbers. Yeah. I've got some vining plants that I know they're going to bear some kind of fruit. They're growing like crazy. But when I choose my vegetables and my plants that I want to put seeds in the ground to cause to grow, I pick them out to decide what I want to harvest. Because, you know, I don't really want to harvest, you know, weeds, so I don't plant weeds. Doesn't make much sense, does it? And I really don't want to plant, you know, crabgrass when I want nice Bermuda grass. I don't plant trees when I want to grow bushes. I don't plant, oh, I don't know. You get the picture, don't you? What you want is what you plant. What you put into the ground, you yourself will cause to grow. That's what your actions are like. A lot of the things that you do cause certain reactions to happen in life to you you yourself will bring about a lot of your own problems that most people will walk around saying, oh, the devil did this or the devil did that. And they always blame some of their own actions on someone else's problems and blame someone else for what they themselves have done to themselves. You see, they are like this container. Kind of like, you know, there's dirt in here, you know. I don't know if you can see real close, but uh, if you look in there, there's a plant growing. And it's going to get watered, and it's going to grow, and it's going to develop into something. Now, if it's a weed, I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to cut it up and toss it out and maybe use it as fertilizer. But 
until it grows, I'm not really sure what it is. So I'm just going to water it, give it sunshine, and let it grow up with all my other plantings. And that's what God does in your life. He causes the wheat to grow with the tares. He causes your actions to fully develop and get you really into trouble. You know the old expression, if you give them enough rope, they'll hang themselves? Well, God gives you enough grace to really cause you to find yourself flat on your face. Because you will not appreciate grace until you've really screwed up your life. And then you realize how much you need God to direct your life as opposed to you direct your life. Because it's pretty obvious that he who created the universe, meaning the bushes and the trees and the plantings and the seeds and the seasons and everything that's growing in its time and its purpose and its plan, he seems to know best what's right for his people. You know, not just Jewish people, you know, like people like to say, well, his people are Jewish people. No, meaning the people that call upon the name of the Lord. We like to say they're Christian, but the truth is, when we use the word Christian nowadays, that seems to cover a lot of people that claim to be something that we don't know what they mean. So I like to say those that call upon the name of the Lord, those that know Jesus, those that talk to God, those that are having a personal relationship with God. Now God didn't call them Christians because you see, that term came about as kind of a slam later on in history. God called them his own, you know, his children, his family, his sons and daughters. And that's what you are if you have a relationship with him. And he likes to have you to grow up and become mature. So what he does is he lets you sometimes reap the harvest of your own plantings. He lets you grow up, you know, lots of fruit. I mean, hey, that's what I'm planting. You know, I've got my veggies in. I've got my fruit in. I've got my flowering bushes and my... I don't have any trees, but you know, I have lots of plants that I like to grow. And they seem to all be blossoming and blooming and growing and developing and becoming mature. But not everybody does that. You see, there are people that no matter how much seed you throw in there and how much you water it and how much you put in sunshine, it just won't grow. Because seed that falls on good soil will just shoot right up. Matter of fact, I got some. Some of this grew up in like one day. That's good soil. <laughs> some of this hasn't developed in two weeks now. It even stinks a little bit. So maybe it's rotting in there and it's just not good soil. Then there's rocky ground, and you know, you've heard the parables before about what happens with seed that's cast upon those kind of areas. You know, they get trampled on, they get stomped on, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But you get to pick where, what, and how you plant. You get to decide whether you're going to use a container like this, which is a peat moss container, or maybe a container like this, which, you know, my cup of noodles came in. Well, Top Ramen, or one of those kinds of noodles. Or, like my little round ones, which I get my little chicken bones in. You know, I get this kind of like, my wife loves them. They're barbecue chickens or something, you know. And I think we get them from Domino's or something, you know, and they're really good. Also gives me some containers that I can use. And for some reason, my plants, love these as starters because they seem to grow so much better. Maybe it's the design or something. Or maybe it's the chicken that was in it. You know I love chicken. But the point being is that God knows what's best to prepare the soil. God knows what's best for the growth of the plant. God knows what kind of seed you're planting. You may not understand it sometimes the things you're going through. You know, like, oh, I don't know, you know, you're you're kind of an angry person or you're a bitter person. You know, you've gotten kind of ticked off regularly lately. You're kind of depressed or you're at unrest. You don't seem to be able to kind of like go with the flow anymore. You know, you always want to be in charge or you want to be the head honcho. 
or you just want more money or more action or more excitement or more of a relationship or more this more that but you're not at peace you're not content you haven't found yourself in the love of God right now have you As a matter of fact if we had to talk about it between you and I you might say that you're in the wintering of your soul you might say that you're being challenged by what's going on in your life and you're thinking that God has forsaken you can I tell you something he didn't forsake you not at all as a matter of fact nine times out of ten when people come to me and they explain to me their circumstances I just ask them a couple simple questions. Hey, have you read your Bible today? <laughs> well, no, I kind of quit doing that. Ah, okay. Have you uh, talked to God lately? Well, no, you know, I don't really get into that. I don't think He talks. Oh, okay. Have you, uh, like, gone to church recently? Well, no, I kind of got burned out on that. Ah, okay. Um, you're a Christian? Really? You just don't like going to any of those things, huh? So you really don't like doing the Christian things because they're Christian. I think I know what the problem is. And it's not God. When you go into and seek the Lord for seriousness, most people come to God not because He's somebody they want to go search out and find their purpose in life. They usually come to God because they're desperate. Most people that love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, do so because to whom much is forgiven, he loveth much, is what Jesus said. And that's usually the way people get when, out of desperation, they cry out to God. And sometimes that's done through a process we call reaping what you sow. You see, each one of these plants might also be anger, wrath, malice, you burned somebody, you hurt somebody, you stomped on somebody's feelings, you know, you said some, oh no, bad thing, you know, you used the F-bomb, the N-bomb, every other word bomb that you could think of, you know, you kind of like invested in the flesh, you know, now the flesh is coming back and stomping on you, and you're going, what happened? It wasn't God that did it to you, you did it, you're the one, you see, you have to clean up your act. You could stand there all dirty and muddied and kind of like the way I'm getting a little dirty and muddied and you know just stand there looking stupid before God with all the mud and guck and blood and cuts and scrapes and tears and say, God, why did you do this to me? Or you could admit that you've fallen down flat on your face through your own actions and deeds. Because most of the time, I don't know about you, but that's the way I find myself. I quit doing this kind of like investing in other things so that I could have more peace in my life. Because maybe you don't want peace in your life, but I kind of like peace and quiet, even though you hear the noise. I kind of like the love of God that's shed abroad in my heart for lots of people, including the Muslims, including the people that you don't think anyone loves. I happen to love them. I happen to care what happens to them. I happen to be there when they have a need because that's what I'm here for. You see, God sent me here to be a witness for Him, not a pleaser of religious ideas that you might have of what I should do. I think I'm doing what God wants me to do. And that means that should someone say, you know, Michael, you happen to have a lot of plants. I want a plant. I'll give them one, or two, or three. Or they might come up to me and say, you know, you got a couple coats, I need one, and I'll give them one. Or I might see somebody on the street, they say, hey, you know what, I need a ride. Okay, no questions asked, you just do it. Because you don't have to be over the top about what you're doing. But you have to be honest about who you are. And because I like peace in my life, I like love in my life, I like joy in my life, I like meekness, temperance, kindness, gentleness, and all these other things, I choose to not plant violence in my life. I choose not to own guns in my life. I choose not to participate in political dialogue and arguments in my life. I choose not to debate stupid things. 
that just keep going over and over and over again every year or every four years or as a matter of fact every election that's because I choose a more excellent way now you can do what you want you see you get to reap what you sow but the one thing I wanted you to know is that don't blame God for what you harvest when you had the opportunity to do the plantings yourself when you get the chance to plant in your own life seeds whether of the Word of God or the Word of man whether of the word of the world or the word of technology whether the word of politicians or the word of the government or the word of your pastor or the word of any other person except Jesus because you see his word endures every other word doesn't it's the way it boils down to pretty simple theology pretty simple concept it's practical it's realistic boils down to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is what it does. It simply comes to the point where you say, you know what? I don't like harvesting all this crap in my life. I think I want to harvest something different. I want something to come of my life that has fruit in it, that tastes good, that looks good, that smells good. As a matter of fact, I want to be good. I want to be a person that God could say, I'm proud of him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You want to harvest that? Think about planting. You need to plant something. Because what you're planting so far isn't growing right, is it? It's up to you. You let me know how it works out for you. As far as I'm concerned, hey, you can see what I've been doing. What have you been doing lately?